All right, let's see. We're on page 471. We'll start with uh, section 6 now. So let's do the first problem, and I will do it in magenta. Problem number 1. 3 plus diamond over 2 is equal to 7 and a half. And they say, what number, when used in the place of diamond above, makes the statement true? Well, they're just making the diamond a variable, right? So we could just say, you know, 3 plus x over 2 instead of an x instead of the diamond, because that's where we're used to, is equal to. And I like to, uh, uh, well, we could write this as a decimal if we want, 7 and a half. 7 and a half. Multiply both sides by 2 times 2. So you get 3 plus x is equal to 15 x is equal to 12. So that's choice D. Or we could say diamond is equal to x is equal to 12. OK, problem number two. And they, got, they have this thing drawn. Let me draw what they drew. I'm doing a different color. So they have like a transversal here. And then they have one line that goes like this. And then they have another line that goes something like this. And then, let's see, they wrote a bunch of stuff. They wrote, this is angle 1, 2, 3, 4, then 5, 6, 7, 8. And these are lines L and lines M. And they say in the figure above, L is parallel to M. So L is parallel to M. All right, parallel lines. If L is parallel to M, the sum of the measures of angle 2 and 4 so the sum of 2 and 4 must equal the sum of the measures of which of the following pairs of angles. So the sum of 2 and 4, right? The sum of 2 and 4. And actually, we, we know another thing. We know that 2 and 4 are, are equal to each other, right? Because they're opposite angles. But anyway, what, what angles would be the same as 2 plus 4? Well, we can just do you know what we learned in geometry class about corresponding angles. We know that. This angle is the same thing as this angle. And we actually know that that angle is also the same thing as this angle, right? Because they're opposite. And that first one we know that they're because they're corresponding. And similar, that angle is the same as this one. So 2 plus 4 should be the same thing as 6 plus 8. And all we used is corresponding angles to say, well, 4 is going to be the same as 8, 2 is the same as 6. And we also know that 6 and 8 are the same, and 2 and 4 are the same. So it's choice D. Problem. Number three. Image invert. All right, there's something. OK. Let me draw this table, because it looks like we'll have to use it. So I have, it's like a box here. And then let me draw some of the lines. So it's. All right, almost there. And then they say, men, women, total, employed, unemployed, total. And they wrote in the numbers 27,000, those are zeros, 48,000. 21,500 and 50,500. In the table above describing the Preston City workforce, or the table is partially filled in. Based on the information in the table, how many women in the Preston City workforce are unemployed? So we want to figure out women that are unemployed. So we want to figure out, we need to figure out this box. All right? So how do we do that? Well, first we can figure out the women that are employed because there's 48,000 workers, 27,000 are men. So we just subtract 27,000 from 48. So there's going to be 21,000 women, right? And then if there's 21,000 women, right? I just subtracted. And and uh well, tw oh, no, I'm sorry. There's 21,000 employed women because we're in the employed column. And there're 21,500 total women. Well, then we just subtract again. 21,500 minus 21,000. There must be 500 unemployed women in Preston City. And that's choice A. 
Okay, problem number four, and I will switch them from this kind of nauseating color, I think. Let's see, problem number four. A group of students washed cars to raise money. The net amount A, so they A in dollars raised by washing K cars is given by the function. Oh, well they tell us A of K, so this is how much you've made after washing K cars is 4k minus 30. If the group washed 15 cars, what is the net amount they raised? Well, this seems unbelievably easy, because they tell you that k is 15. So a of 15 is equal to 4 times 15 minus 30. 4 times 15 is 60 minus 30. That just equals thirty. They raised uh, thirty thirty dollars. That's choice E, and and that one. If I when I, if I was taking the SAT, I would have paused just to make sure I didn't miss something. And I'm actually pausing now to make sure I didn't miss a trick. But that's I think that's it. That's kind of one of those freebie quick questions. Okay, problem number five. Now I'll switch colors for variety. If x r is equal to v, x r is equal to v. And v is equal to kr, v is equal to kr. And we also know that rv does not equal 0, which also tells us that neither of these numbers can equal 0. Which of the following is equal to k? And all of the choices are have just x's and some numbers. So we want to write k in terms of in terms of x. So xr is equal to v and v is equal to kr. So xr is equal to v. We also know v is equal to kr, right? So we know that xr is equal to kr. And since we know that r does not equal 0, right? we can divide both sides of this equation by r, and they cancel out. And we get x is equal to k, or k is equal to x. So that is choice d. Oh, they're giving us a lot of quick problems, but I guess good. I can fit a lot into a into one video. Okay, problem number six. The eggs in a certain basket are either white or brown. If the ratio of white eggs to brown eggs is so white, I should probably do it in those colors, but I'm not to confuse you. The ratio of white to brown is equal to two over three. Each of the following could be the number of eggs in the basket except so this is this is a tricky one so if i the ratio of white to brown is 2 to 3 right so let's say you know white if we multiply white to brown is equal to 2 over 3 or another way we could say it is white is equal to 2 thirds times the brown eggs right and so the total the total eggs in the basket are going to be white plus brown. The total eggs are going to be white plus brown. And and so we could write, you know, this W, we could write it, you know, it's two thirds of the number of brown eggs is the white eggs. That's what we figured out here. Plus the brown eggs. So the total number of baskets is let's see, what's two thirds plus you know, one is the same thing as three thirds, right? The total number of baskets is five thirds times the number of brown eggs. So what this tells us, and we know we can't have a fractional number of eggs, so we know that this has to be a whole number. So if this is a whole number, we can just see, well, what numbers can we get um, using whole numbers that would, uh, you know, if we said 5 thirds b, this is the first choice, is equal to 10, could that be a choice? Let's see, b, b would have to be 3 fifths times 10, which would be, uh, this cancels out. Well, that works, right? Because then b would be six, so that could work. If b is well, I think we already we already know, right? B, the total number of baskets has to be divisible by five, right? Because b is equal to the total number times three over five. I just used this equation. Five thirds b is equal to the total. Multiply both sides, have the reciprocal, you get this. And the only choice that's not divisible by 5 is choice B. Hope I didn't rush it, but I had to finish under the wire.